The following is a Dallin Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio. Coverage of Dallin Catholic High School basketball is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen, Mercy One, and Tamiya and Sons. Thank you for supporting Dallin Catholic basketball on Iowa Catholic Radio. 11.50 a.m., 88.5 f.m., 94.5 f.m., streaming at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. And good evening and welcome to the East High Gymnasium alongside Steve Devaney. I'm Mark Amadale as we get set for girls basketball tonight. Just one game and it's Dowling taking on Des Moines East in a non-division game here in the CIML. And Steve Devaney, welcome. It's been, been a while since you've been here at the East High uh, Gymnasium. want to give a shout out to Lyle Fetters, the athletic director, who is not here tonight. We're under the capable hands of Lowell Long and I don't know how Cape this uh, Fall, the Central Region High School Activities Director of the Year for 2019. So wow. congratulations to the East High Athletic Director, Lyle Fetters. And he was our contact person during the uh, playoff games over at Williams Stadium and did a great job. And here we're at the tremendous and legendary East High Gymnasium. The gymnasium where Bob and Sharon Hansen, all uh, uh, Hall of Fame coaches in their own right, and George Davis that have coached in this gym and yep. been the, the head coach here, Steve. So we're yep. in we're in good hands tonight. We I, are hey, courtside. You, you and I are both old enough to remember those days well. And uh, <laughs> Bob and Sharon, they're, that's they're, right. They, they, they took home a title in 1979. The pictures up there pictures on the wall. Pictures on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Right here in the south wall. It's at, incredible. Uh, at East and brand new floor. They put this in not too long ago, and uh, we are courtside. They, uh, Mr. Long said, "You want to be up here, or do you want to be down here?" And I said does make a difference yeah whatever it works and uh, we're glad to be here this is a non-division game of the CIML we'll take a look at uh, uh, tonight's uh, matchups in a moment but uh, the Dowling Maroons what a week last week for Dowling with uh, the wins they had over ranked opponents they've now won Dowling girls have won seven in a row in nine of their last 11 games and wins last week it was Monday over 12th ranked games Tuesday over fifth ranked Waukee and Friday night Steve over second ranked with Johnson the Dowling girls on a tremendous run and this week's not getting any easier they have East tonight in a non division game but then Friday night they travel up to Scott DeYoung country in Ankeny Centennial and then uh, to make matters even more interesting this Saturday they've been 5A so it, the task doesn't get any easier for the Dowling girls but they are really playing postseason quality ball right now. Yeah, they really seem focused and kind of on a mission. They've elevated their play, especially on the defensive side of the ball. You got on the offensive side, you got more kids contributing, and so you know you hate to uh, you know karma and momentum and keeping that edge. Those are all important things, so you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. But um, if they can keep it going and, and keep that focus and play as hard as they've been playing, mm-hmm. they could really do some special things down the line. And of course, uh, Dowling at full strength. They were last Friday night when they defeated a. Uh, uh, Johnson at the Dowling Gym, but tonight Ella McVeigh will uh, will start instead of come off the bench for the Maroons. But uh, talk to uh, Coach uh, Kristen Meyer, the Dowling girls' head coach, in her fourth year at the Dowling uh, at the helm, and she said, "Hey, everybody's healthy, and that's where you want to be as you're playing what game number uh, 16 out of a 21 game regular season." Steve. Yeah. No, they've been on a good roll, and uh, tonight the uh, their opponent East High is a little inexperienced, and head coach Sam Powell, who was here for. I don't even know, 10, 12 years, has uh, resigned and moved on. And, and He's so, retired. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it's a little bit, uh, it'll be a tough matchup tonight for East, and uh, but uh, Maroon's been playing well lately. Yes, they have. And uh, you mentioned uh, Sam Powell. He led uh, East to a runner-up finish back in 2010, and they were state champs in 2011, and his picture's on the wall. Those two years, they went 51-1, and one, yeah. and that was uh, quite the uh, – back-to-back years uh, for Des Moines East and Sam Powell, who I think it was after 15 years, he retired. His daughter, his youngest daughter, graduated last year, was on the club, and uh, Sam decided to retire. 264 wins, 111 losses in his uh, 15 years here at East and brought him a state title in 2011. So he's enjoying the retirement era. And uh, the new head coach actually went to school with my cousin who uh, attended Clark of Osceola schools, and that's Aaron O'Toole. He was an assistant to the boys' staff, and then he uh, moved up to the girls' staff when the opening uh, came along. And uh, so he is here in his first year. And their East High's record is four and ten. They're three and three in Metro Conference play. And uh, you mentioned Dowling's record, thirteen and two. 
Maroons are ranked second by the Des Moines Register. came out this morning. The girls' union rankings will come out Thursday, but they were ranked third on the girls' union rankings. And uh, the Maroons are 6-1. They're tied with Johnson for the uh, Central Conference lead in the CIML Central Division. So that's kind of the tail of the tape. And yeah, this is a young... Uh, John, this is a young E-Squad, uh, Steve. They had nine seniors that graduated last year, and five of them started, and one returning starter, which would have been transferred to Valley and is not playing basketball, Leah Williams. Remember her? She was gal average eight and a half points and uh, went transferred to Valley and not is, is now not out for basketball. So they have retooled their whole starting lineup. The one player for East that played a lot last year, Rachel Pook, uh, the 5'9 senior, is their leading scorer, rebounder, and assists leader and she has a lot of youngsters around her that have well, a lot of inexperience around here and yep, uh, that's right you know how that uh, you know how that goes steve so you know, nonetheless you still got to play the game and uh, tonight i i would expect uh, dowling to come out and take it right to east and you, know, you just never know how teams will shoot go back yep. about a uh, monday night last night they had high school basketball as you know and what an upset we saw uh in Boys play. Actually, I'm sorry. It was last Friday night in boys play. The Valley boys upset number one Waukee after Waukee a week ago shot lights out at Dowling. Uh, they beat uh, Waukee at Waukee. So the Valley Tigers, a team that Dowling boys took care of early in the year. Uh, so you just never know how you're going to shoot, and that kind of leads me to tonight. You never know how teams are going to shoot, especially on the road when you're in this gym once, it, just once during the season. And yep. that's a test for the Dowling girls coming on the road. Yeah, and not only that, but you you know once in a while teams. Uh human nature and, and uh, teams kind of take their foot off the gas pedal once in a while, lose that edge, and, and bad things uh, have, have a tendency to happen. But uh, this on paper, at least, would appear to be somewhat of a mismatch. And uh, so if it goes as planned, maybe some of the Dowling kids that don't get a play as frequently get a chance to get in there a little bit tonight. That's how I would guess it plays out. Sure. But, uh, but like you said, you never know. That's right. All right, alongside Steve Devinney, I'm Mark Hammadale. David Beltram is our studio producer. We're going to take a break here on the pregame show. Again, we're live from East High School. I think the paper had it this morning. The game was at uh, uh, Dowling. It is not. Dowling plays road games this week. It's a girls-only game tonight here at East. And on Friday, Dowling girls and boys teams travel to Centennial. We'll have both games beginning at 6 o'clock this coming uh, Friday night. We'll take a break and be back with more pregame in the starting lineups. It's Dowling and East here at the East High Gym on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports 365 is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling Catholic graduate, and Dr. Todd Pedig. The Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610. Online at ashworthvision.com. The Catholic Tuition Organization provides the best tax savings over any other charitable giving in the state. 65% of your contribution directly reduces your Iowa income tax liability. Plus, there are still federal deductibility options to further save on taxes. Find details online, ctoiowa.org. All this for the kids and their future. And welcome back to the East High Gymnasium. And alongside uh, Steve Devinney, I'm Mark Amadale. Let's get set for tonight's starting lineups. It's Dowling and East, girls-only contest. The uh, officials have now taken the uh, floor, so we're getting closer and closer to the uh, start of the game. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape, so to speak, for the uh, Dowling Maroons. The head coach is uh, Kristen Meyer in her fourth year. 69 wins, 19 losses in her four years at Dowling. And overall, 10 years of coaching. She was at Nevada before Dowling. 170 wins, 64 losses in her career. Assisted by Joel Danner, Scott Babinat, and, uh, well, Tom Donahue and Lisa Morrissey-Smith are not with them tonight because they had a JV, I think it was a JV2 game. So Tom and Lisa were not coaching that. So nonetheless, let's start the Dowling lineup. Will be Ella McVeigh. She gets back in the starting lineup, a 5'6 junior, averaging four points, just under three rebounds, and Ella... We'll wear number one. The other guard is Caitlin Clark. 
Clark, the leading scorer in Class 5A uh, basketball, a 5'11 senior guard, averaging 35 points, 8.5 rebounds, 4.5 assists, uh, leads the team with 35 steals, and leads the team with 57 made three-pointers, and leads the team with an 82% free throw average and score number 11. And the third guard for Dowling is Emma Gippel. Gippel, a 5'10 sophomore, averaging 5.5 points, just under 5 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and she'll wear number 23. At one forward for the Maroons, Grace Gaber, the second leading uh, three-point shooter with 37 made threes in the season. Grace is a 5'11", senior average of nine and a half points and two rebounds. She'll wear number 31. And at center for Dowling is Nai Tong. Nai is a 6'1", senior, averaging five points just under five rebounds. So again for Dowling, the three guards are McVay, Clark, and Gipple, along with Gaber and Nai Tong. Off the bench, we will see uh, Meg Simplot, Julia Moore, and Lexi Bowles. We also may see a little of Brianna Rodriguez. Dowling's record is 13-2. and two. They're 6-1 and one in Central Conference play. They're ranked second by the Des Moines Register and third by the Girls' Union. And they come in on a seven-game winning streak. And they lead this series with Des Moines East 10-5 going back to 2006-2007 season. The Maroons have won eight in a row against Des Moines East. And that goes back to Sam Powell days, I think. Uh, so we'll keep that in mind. And that's a look at the Dowling starting lineup. Maroons are wearing their road maroon uniforms with white numbers and letters. And now for the home team on the scoreboard, and that is the East High Scarlets. The head coach in his first year is Aaron O'Toole. They have four wins, ten losses. Their Metro Conference mark is 3-3. Three and three. And I mentioned earlier, this is a non-division game in the uh, CIML tonight. He's assisted by Amber Skates, Ryan Bracken, Stephanie Fleckenstein, and Keontae White, Grandview's own Keontae White, member of that uh, state championship football team over at Grandview back in 2013. And the Scarlets will start this lineup. At one guard, Remy Dyer, a 5'4 sophomore, averaging three points, show war number one. The other guard is Brecklin Williams, a 5'6 senior, averaging one and a half points, show war number four. Third guard is Hannah Olson, a 5'6 senior, averaging three and a half points, show war number 12. The fourth guard is Lyric Sellers, a 5'7 sophomore, averaging eight points, four rebounds, a second leading scorer and rebounder on the team, but leads the team with made, 20, with made three-pointers with 22. And at one forward, Rachel Pook, the only returning veteran on the squad, a 5'9 senior from last year, averaging 10.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, 1.5 assists, and uh, she leads the team with 22 steals and 17 blocks, and second on the team with 17 made threes. So, again, it's Dyer, Williams, Olson, Sellers, and Pook, the five on the floor for East, who comes in with a record of 4-10. and 10. Uh, They average 32.5 points on offense, give up 54 points on defense. For Dowling, the Maroons average 73 points on offense and give up 50, just under 53 points on defense. So, Steve Devaney, that is the tale of the tape. And your thoughts before we get underway as we take our final break uh, here as they're introdu- making the introductions here at uh, East High. Any night you have a good uh, varsity basketball game is a good night, Mark. And so uh, they're just announcing the o- official scorer here, PA announcer announcing the starting lineups. Mark uh, stepped away just for a minute. Ella McVay and Clark are on the floor for the Maroons. Here comes Gip. Looks like the uh, Maroons have a slight uh, height advantage as well. Starters for East High go 5'4". Dyer. Williams is 5'6". Hannah Olson is also 5'6". Lyric Sellers, number 23, is a 5'7 sophomore. And then uh, Rachel Puke is a 5'9". Senior. So they'll go three seniors, two sophomores, and they'll be undersized a little bit at most every position, Mark. Yeah, they certainly will, Steve. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is a uh, East team that's going to be young, and I know, uh, you know the cupboard's not bare. they just got to get some experience, and this is what they don't have. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, we're going to take a break, and we come back. We'll have the tip-off between Dowling and East here at the East High Gym. But first, we'll have a uh, pregame prayer with Father Ryan Andrew, a chaplain at Dowling Catholic High School, and a word from Dr. Dan Ryan, the, the uh, president of Dowling Catholic here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Hi, this is Dr. Dan Ryan, president of Dowling Catholic High School, and welcome to another season of exciting Dowling High School basketball. We are proud to be partners with Iowa Catholic Radio, not only broadcasting basketball, but also being partners in preparing Christ-centered leaders for life. Go Maroons! Hello, my name is Father Ryan Andrew, and I'm the chaplain at Dowling Catholic High School. 
Let us pray for the coaches, players, and trainers tonight for this athletic competition. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your gifts. We ask you to bless all those involved in this athletic competition tonight. We ask that you keep them safe and that they all show good sportsmanship. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. All holy men and women, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The home and away voice of Dallin Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. And welcome back to the East High Gymnasium alongside the Steve Devinney, the Hall of Famer from Grandview. I'm Mark Amadil. Got to have the Hall of Famer and first-time grandfather. And we uh, love it here. It's the 2019-2020 high school girls and boys basketball season. Welcome, Steve. And uh, when's the last time you've been in this gym? Uh, probably some, you're probably coaching a team down here, I'm guessing. You know, my, when my kids played, I think uh, the last time, well, I've been on some radio with you as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, the last time my son Luke about played five over years here was... Uh, since we did radio here, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, it was on a Saturday afternoon back wow. when we had some of those Saturday games. So. Yeah. But, yep. uh, all right, let's take a look at some of the games that are going on tonight in the CIML. These are all uh, CIML, they call them crossover games. Yep. Um, of course, Dowling at East, about ready to tip off here as uh, our lead official, Ryan Perriott, will throw it in the air. Ryan Dixon, Rod Russell round out our three-person officiating crew. Urbandale's at Lincoln. Ankeny Centennial is at Waukee. That'll be a great boys matchup there. Yep, yep. Both teams in the top five. Ames at Valley. Ankeny at Roosevelt and Southeast Polk at North. Uh, Marshalltown's at Atoma. Boys only game tonight in Fort Dodge. It's Johnson at Fort Dodge. As uh, girls that are not playing tonight, these teams have buys. Johnston, Fort Dodge, and Mesa City and Hoover do not play. Boys, East and Dowling, Hoover and Mesa City do not play tonight. So we may see a few scouts here. You just never know. We're underway as Dowling won the toss. And here's Clark, top of the key, just inside the three-point line, top of the key, good. And 2 to nothing, Dowling as the Maroons had their first offensive set and the ball got poked out of bounds. They run the inbounds play there, Steve. Yeah, Caitlin's really been shooting well as of late. Very, very confident. Absolutely. Now a shot no good by the Scarlets. They worked from the right side, and that was Lyric Sellers with the miss. And underneath Clark, <laughs> she passed up the shot on the elbow, tried to get it to uh, Gaber. And she threw the ball out of bounds, but she didn't throw a forward pass. She went behind her back, tried to hit Gaber, who was wide open. Turnover against the Maroons. Shall we politely say that was an ill-advised pass by Caitlin? (laughs) Her leash is a little bit longer than most players. Uh, Most, yeah. (laughs) All right, it's uh, Remy Dyer along with Brecklin Williams, Hannah Olson, Rachel Puke, and Lyric Sellers. And now a turnover by East. Dowling turns it back over. Scarlett's underneath, and they throw it away as uh, McVeigh hauls it in. Now here's Clark with it in the corner to Gaber for three. It's up good. To me and Sun's three-pointer by Grace Gaber gives Dowling a 5 nothing lead early. Yeah, uh, beat East High down the court in transition. Caitlin probably could have had a shot herself, but uh, Grace was wide open on the baseline there on the corner on the left side and knocked it down. 5 to nothing, Dowling early in this uh, first quarter. East with the basketball. They try to dribble on the post, and then the reverse pass stolen away. As Maffei steps right in front of Sellers, down court, layup by Nighton, good. Another unselfish play by uh, Caitlin, good pass. Good break that time yep. for Dowling after the steal. A lot of, of five on three, looked like a couple of the East, player, East High players were having trouble getting back. Now here's Rachel Puke for three, it's no good. Rebound McVay, and Ella has it, down court, gets to Gaber. Lobs it inside to Clark on the right block, underneath the Nighton, off her knee, out of bounds to Dowling. Now we got a couple cousins playing here tonight. I didn't. I, okay. I forgot to mention this. Okay. Nai Tong for Dowling, and yep. her cousin is Rachel Puke. Oh, okay. Number fourteen. Yeah, her first cousins. Yeah, good outside pa- shooter. Rachel. Parents are over there in the corner, I think. And yeah. they're up over here. So, how about that? They're not guarding each other yet. <laughs> East with the basketball. Hannah Wilson <laughs> with it. <laughs> Little family grudge match going on out here. We had that when your daughters played against their grandfather. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I love those nights. Yeah, couldn't even. Couldn't Jer- even. Jerry was all worked up. Here's a steal by Caitlin Clark. Uncontested layup good. Clark with four points and dowling out early to a 9 nothing lead. 
Yeah, I remember those days, Steve, you yeah. know. Enjoyable for uh, but Betsy and Molly played oh, against yeah. Grandpa Grandpa Jerry over at the Roundhouse. Coach had some good teams, especially uh, when Molly played. Kristen Turk, I, who went on to play at Drake. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I wasn't too concerned about you during those matchups, but I was more concerned about Tracy, your wife, yeah. where she was sitting. Down. Here's another steal by Clark. Layup up and good. The basket will count, and the foul will be on Rachel Puke of Des Moines East. Yeah, it's, a, it's just right now it's a little bit one-sided here in terms of uh, Maroons have been able to get some steals, and then when they do get them, they get run outs. we got a 30-second timeout called by Des Moines East, and head coach Aaron O'Toole dialing up 11 to nothing. Caitlin Clark will be going to the free throw line when we come out of the timeout, but uh, – I want to mention our supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio tonight. I want to thank them for being on board. They include Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, and Kemen. Also want to thank Tumi and Sons. They support our three-point baskets. Tumi and Sons located at 1501 Southeast First Street, 515-282-7976. You can order takeout also online at tumiandsons.net. And uh, Say hello to Mario, Joe, Joe Jr., and Louie. We want to thank them for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio's coverage of Dowling Basketball. But, yes, I always want to know, where was your wife sitting behind the baskets there at uh, Lincoln when they uh, played the roundhouse? As Clark's free throw is good, and she has seven points in the first quarter. Yeah, I think Tracy was, uh, without a doubt, rooting for the Maroons. She forgot where she came from. Well, she remembered how to get the roundhouse, though. Yes, yeah, she did. East with the basketball, puke on the right side. Gets it over to Sellers for three. It's no good. Rebound Dowling. Gipple takes it away. Dowling coming out of the timeout with their same five. McVeigh now she'll shoot the three in transition. It's short. Ball slapped around and coming away with it is Remy Dyer, the sophomore for East with it. In the front court. Gets it over to uh, Sellers. Lenrick will launch a three from the right ring wide over. Dowling's Grace Gaber. It's no good. Dowling, the ball gets it down. Gets down court. They get it to Tong. She misses the layup, and it's slapped out of bounds. And they say it went off of Rachel Puke, and it'll be Dowling basketball as we have a substitution here. Alexis Brown in for East High. Yep, too bad there. Nye, uh, Nye missed a little bit of a bunny off a of feed from uh, from Clark. and mm-hmm. Out of bounds, the Maroons will get it back. So Alexis Brown, a 5'3 sophomore, replaces Remy Dyer, the 5'4 sophomore. Here is Clark with it. Little high low underneath the night tong. Her shot up and no good. Right around over Hannah Olson. We got a tie up in the back court as McVeigh tied up Alexis Brown. And it'll be East High basketball as Bowles. Got some subs coming in here we now got for the Maroons. Four out coming in and four in for Dowling. Looks like Caitlin Clark will stay on the floor, but nope. otherwise no, it's she's uh, coming out too. Oh, I'm sorry. So who stayed? Oh, uh, Ella McVeigh stayed. McVeigh will stay. Brianna Rodriguez, Julia Moore, Meg Simplot, Lexi Bowles. We'll Along with McVeigh. Her. So East with the ball. They go right to left towards the south basket here at uh, East High School. They're wearing their home white uniforms, black numbers. And underneath the layup, good. That's Alexis Brown off the bench with her first basket. And that is East's first basket. Comes at the four-minute mark of the first quarter, 12-2 nice. to two Dowling. Nice dribble drive there by number three. Runs with the basketball. Brianna Rodriguez. It's over in the left wing. That's Meg Simplot with it. Out to Rodriguez. Fakes the three. Down the lane she goes. And a scoop shot no good. Tipped by Bowles no good. And a rebound puke. Rachel Puke with it in transition. Dowling gets back. And the Scarlets will now run their offense. As Sellers gets it back over to Puke. And it's knocked out of bounds by McVeigh. As they say she stepped on the sideline. It'll be East High basketball with three and a half minutes remaining. First quarter. 12 to 2 is our score. Dowling in the lead over East here in this girls only game tonight. One game. And the time was moved up to 6.15 tonight, like the girls normally start. So we like that. Long three up, in and out, no good by the Scarlets. That's Sellers with the miss. Rebound Dowling and Gipple. Or rather, Simplot with it. Megan the lane turns. That ball's tied up, and now a loose ball on the floor. And we got to have a jump ball called. Good hustle that time by East. Lyric Sellers tying up Meg Simplot. Yep, very good hustle. Good help defense by the uh, Scarlets as well. Maroons will play it in on the baseline after the held ball. They get it to McVeigh, and Ella travels with the basketball. Right idea, but yeah, good call by the official. The feet. Yep. yep, our official over there, Ryan Dixon, with the correct call. He and Rodney Russell and Ryan Perriott, who's our crew chief, on board tonight. Not a bad, not a big crowd here at East High. Plenty of room, and now. Here's Puke at the free throw line. Her shot's no good. 
Can't get it to fall. Rebound, Bowles and Dowling. Rodriguez now with it. Dribbles down the right side. Leaves it for Moore. Julius shot from the right wing. No good. Ball safe from going out of bounds by McVeigh. Who else? Yeah. Law pass underneath to Simplot. And the pass too hard by Simplot to uh, Simplot over Moore. through uh, Julia. Yep. Little bit sloppy. Get off to a big lead like this and realize that things might be easier than you're used to having them be. And then you start getting a little bit sloppy. 12 to 2. Dowling with the Dowling with the lead. East with the basketball. Now the ball deflected as uh, Brecklin Williams had it deflected out of her hands. Now they get it in the corner. And a pull-up jumper on the baseline. Rolls through. And that is Hannah Olson with the first basket. Her first basket of the night. A little four, uh, three-quarter court pressure here by the Scarlets. After a made shot, Dowling breaks the press. They get it to Moore in the corner. Underneath the McVeigh layup. Good. A little give and go that time. The freshman Moore to the junior McVeigh. You and called it. How about that, Steve? That's a... That's actually a tough place to do it from because Moore was on that uh, corner uh, right to baseline, and that's not where you usually see a pass come from too often. The give and go. East with it, and this is uh, Sellers for three. It's no good. McVeigh with the rebound, pushes it up to Moore. Julio with the left hand, one against two, pulls it back out, gets it to Rodriguez. Brianna to McVeigh for three. Good! Ella McVeigh with a Tamiya and Sons three-pointer. That's her fifth point. Her 12th of the year, and it's 17-4 to Dowling by 13 over East. Yeah, yeah Ella's, Ella's really, really improved her perimeter shooting from a year ago when she was a... No uh, question less, about uh, you know, it. Didn't have as much experience. Shooting 50% from the field and 42% from free throw from three-point range. Got to work on her free throws, uh, Devaney. She may need your help or your I, wife's help. I was going to say. One for four at the free throw line, On the Ella. season? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Ella's but she hasn't been there more. Correct. So we'll we'll get Tracy to get that fixed. I know she can shoot free throws, and your daughters can, your well. son can. <laughs> Here's a steal by Dowling. Rodriguez down court to Moore. Corner three from the left side, no good. Bowles with the rebound. And put back up and good from the right block by Lexi Bowles, who was right there. And the Dowling's lead is now 15, 19 to 4 Maroons with 40 seconds remaining. And now a little underhand shot with this. Is no good by Rachel Puke of East. To go down. Dowling enjoying its largest lead of 15 with Caitlin Clark on the bench for the last four minutes. And now Puke pokes the ball away and is in with a steal. She goes down court right against Simplot in the lane. Shot no good and a foul on Rodriguez, who had the ball stripped away from her by, by Rachel Puke. And... She'll go to the free throw line. So Pook will have two shots here. First one in and out, no good. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Mercy One. Two Rivers, Glass and Door. r r Realty Galoop and Catholic Tuition Organization. Alongside Steve Devinney, Mark Amadale, our studio producer tonight, David Beltram. From the East High Gym, second free throw by Pook is no good. And a rebound east. A re- rebound Dowling with Clark back in the lineup. 15 seconds. Clark will launch a three. Up good. Left wing three. It's a to me and Sons three-pointer for Caitlin Clark. And the lead is now 22-4. to four, An 18-point lead for Dowling. Four seconds remaining. Pook in the corner. Gets it underneath. The layup up and good. They'll count it. Brecklin Williams shoots and scores at the horn. And we've come to the end of the first quarter here at the East High Gym. The score. Dowling 22, East 6, along with Steve Devaney. I'm Mark Amadale here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, construction professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up, heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Construction professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work. It's beautiful. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. It's a family business built on a strong foundation to create a new or remodeled home that is uniquely yours. cpcustomhomes.com. From our family to yours, God bless. Thank you, construction professionals.
Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years experience, Dental Associates is a group dental practice with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Carbaca, Dr. Christine Mulcahy, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. And we're back here at the East High Gym, underway here in the second quarter with Dowling leading 22-6 to over the Scarlets. He's going right to left, and now Pook hits the deck as she uh, trips and falls. Ball stolen away, Clark with it. She goes down court. Her shot up and no good, a whistle and a foul, and this will be on Aon. Number 20, uh, sub in the game. Machier, Machier with the foul, who just got in the ball game. They're going to test your uh, yeah. Your yep. verbal stuff tonight. I, I rehearsed it a little bit. Not with you, though. But uh, And Clark to the line for two. I'm just going to refer to her as number 20. <laughs> You're taking the Dave Marcoulier way. That's what he used to do in football games. We had stuff like, uh, you know, mispronunciations and all that. So, the, the good doctor, David Marcoulier. Yes, he is. What a good man. And uh, second free throw also no good. No, she made the first one, Mark. I'm sorry, one yep. for two. Yep. And Gip, offensive rebound. Put back. gets in there on the offensive glass and scores. Thank you, sir. Well, I was yep. trying to find my notes. It's 25-6, to six, Dowling with the lead over East. Runs by 19. This is the largest lead of the contest. East with the basketball. Remy Dyer in there. Has a ball deflected off of her by Clark. And stolen away by Moore. Out to Clark. Clark. In the corner goes to Gaber for three. Up, good. Grace I, Gaber knocks down another three from the corner left there, Steve Devenny, and that's the second to be in Suns three-pointer for Grace. Unselfish play by Caitlin. She could have got to the rim easily and passed over to the same left-hand corner that uh, she found Gaber before. A shot by Sellers, no good. Dowling running and outlet pass from Gipple to Clark. Caitlin scores. Caitlin Clark, lighten it up. She's got 13 first-half points. I think the Maroons are going to get run outs basically whenever they want them. Another steal by Clark. Yeah. Another run out. Clark uh, steals the ball away from uh, Benta Suba, 5'4 senior, and scores her 15th point. Yeah, a little, little bit one-sided. The Maroons are going to have to kind of take things a little easy as time goes on here. It's going to get 30, ugly. 32-6. to six. Long three, no good by Pook for East. Rebound Dowling. Maroons get it down court. Gaber for three again. It's off the mark. No good. And Nai Tong offensive glass. Her put back up. Good. Nai Tong with her fourth point. And it's 34-6. to six. The Maroons by 28. Remember and last counting. time we were together, Mark, uh, ne- neither Lexi or uh, or Nai scored that night. And uh, Yeah, no points. Nice, nice to see them getting some confidence back. That was against Johnson Friday night. You're correct. Now the Dragons are uh, and they were, they were held scoreless in the paint. Yep. Now Dowling with the ball on the uh, east turnover. Here's the Clark down court underneath to uh, Nai Tong. Layup good. Clark with the assist. And Nai Tong with her sixth point here in the first half. 36-6, to six, Dowling by 30. Beautiful assist there by Caitlin. More unselfish play. She could get to the rim basically anytime she wants, and she's choosing to get her teammates involved, which is always good to see. East with the basketball. They go right to left. They work it inside. The ball slapped away by Clark. They get it out to uh, Machier. Aon over to her teammate. Sellers for three. It's no good, but Sellers gets her own rebound. Nice hustle by Lyric. Not a Dyer. Back to Pook. She'll launch a three. It's blocked by Clark. Right into the hands of Dyer. Pull up jumper in the lane. Off the mark. No good. Rebound Dowling. Julia Moore with the rebound. Down court to Caitlin Clark. Layup is good. Timeout. Timeout Dowling. And for Clark, that's her 17th point. 5.04 5.04 remaining here in the second quarter. It's Dowling, 38. And East, 6. I think this is a substitution timeout for the Maroons with a 32-point lead here. Yeah. And yep. they're going to give it a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. I want to remind folks that we have the 2020 Iowa Catholic Men's Conference going on Saturday, February 22nd at the Embassy Suites Hotel in downtown Des Moines. The conference begins at 8 o'clock. Doors open at 6.30. Mass is offered around 7 with uh, Bishop Johnson 
And the speakers are Iowa State head football coach Matt Campbell and uh, Man Up show host on Iowa Catholic Radio Joe Stopulis. And it's emceed by John Leonetti. I'll be there. I hope I want to invite everybody to come. T- tickets, you can register and purchase tickets for $20 at iowacatholicradio.com under the event. So everybody what, a, what a great is, event that will be. It, it will be. Looking yeah. forward to it. And uh, I say that not being an Iowa State fan, but I am a, a fan of Matt Campbell. And what he's done up there at Iowa State has been tremendous. So, folks, come. Uh, and it's in the morning only, 8 to noon, at the Embassy Sweeps on Saturday, February 22nd. Women, if you're out there, the wives, send your husbands. I'd love to see them there. All right, East with the basketball out of the Dowling timeout. Looks and like Grace whistle. Gaber might have got the foul. She did. Gaber with her first foul. Second team foul on Dowling. East with the two team fouls. I didn't catch the second East foul, Steve. Help me uh, out. Shoot. I just have I, I, I just it. have Pook. Oh, here it is. It's uh, Machier. Yeah, looks like the first uh, free, free throw, throw good. was good. Yeah, by Pook. She has her first point of the night. Second free throw is no good. Rebound Dowling and Gipple. He scored the first point of the ball game at the four minute mark of the first quarter. It's thirty eight to seven. Clark for three in and out, no good. Rebound East and Brecklin Williams. Scarlets have it. Rachel Pook dribbling the ball, dribbles to the left elbow, kicks it back out to uh, Remy Dyer. Now Dyer for three. It's off the mark, no good from the top of the key, and the rebound goes out of bounds. It'll be Dowling basketball as Brianna Rodriguez checking in for Dowling. She'll replace Caitlin Clark. Oh, here comes a couple more subs. Also in there, Olivia Bailey, number 35 for Dowling, and number five, Maddie Wishman. Wishman a junior. Bailey also a junior. As Gaber will check out, and so will Gipple. Also in there for Dowling, Aaron Kleppe. Mar- Maroons have now played 12 kids. They will tonight. Yep. Oh, might have walked, got away with it. Yeah, well, I think she got, came down and the ball came later. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> it looked a little funky, didn't it? Maroons Ooh. lob it inside, and they throw it away. Too, Pass too strong that time by Maddie Wishman. Had the right idea, tried to find uh, Kleppe on the left block, overthrew it. 38-7, Dowling. Very good idea. A little bit too much air under it, Mark. Under four minutes remaining. You know, one thing I didn't do, Steve, and we may have to find something to talk about, halftime guests. I want to get Donahue, but he's over there taking pictures, and he, he refused my invitation, oh, as goodness. always. Here's Pook with the shot for East. It's no good. Rebound comes out to uh, Dowling. With it is Simplot. Dribbles down court. Gets it to Wishman. Back to Simplot for three. It's good. Another three and Sun Street pointer for the Maroons tonight. Makes Simplot with her first three. Nice teamwork by those two. A little two-person game. Absolutely. Wishman dribble drive and back out to Simplot in the corner. Dowling with this largest lead of 34. Another turnover by East. They get it down court to Rodriguez. Brianna shot too strong. Rebounded by the that Maroons. Like and that Bailey. is Olivia Bailey. And, and she's one. fouled. And the basket will count. And one foul number four for uh, that's Williams on uh, East High. That's Brecklin Williams, her first foul. Third team foul for East here in the first half. Dowling with two team fouls and to the free throw line. Olivia Bailey, five eleven junior, chance for an one. This is her first free throw attempt as a varsity player, and it's no good. Rebound out to East. With it is Poop. Triple drives in the lane and puts up a shot. No good. As she dribbled all the way down the right block, drew the foul. And she'll go to the line as this foul will be on Aaron Kleppe, the 5'10 senior for the Maroons. And free throws coming for Pook, who is one for three tonight at the line. And the first one in and out and goes back in. Rachel Pook, leading scorer for East, averaging 10.5 points, has two points tonight. Alexis Brown has a basket. Brecklin Williams with a basket. And Hannah Olson with the basket for the Scarlet. Second free throw in an, is no good off the back iron, too strong. Rebound Dowling. And makes Simplot. Out to Rodriguez. Granted, nobody guarding her all the way down the lane. And puts up the shot. It's good. The basket will count and a foul on East. Good move by Rodriguez. A little uh, stop and go there. Yeah. After she did stop, then she had basically a straight line drive to the hoop, and nobody really picked her up. Fouls on Alexis Brown, her first, number three. And the free throw by Rodriguez is no good. So she can't convert the and one, but she has two points. 45 to 8, Dowling, and now another turnover by East. Runes running. They get to Rodriguez in transition. She tries to lob it inside to Kleppi, and it's stolen away by Pook. 
Rachel Pook in the lane. Spin, stops, underhand shot, no good. Drew the foul. And she will go to the free throw line. Fouls on Rodriguez and Brianna. That'll be her second. Each team, I think, with four team fouls. Allie Anderson set the check in for Dowling, along with Lexi Bowles in the next dead ball. And the first free throw is good by Pook. As more substitutions for Dowling, we mentioned Bowles checking in, along with Anderson checking out will be Aaron Kleppe and Meg Simplot. Second free throw good by Pook. Rachel tonight for East has four points. She's four of six the free throw line. It's 45-10. Dowling by 35. Men's largest lead was 37. Corner three is up and good. And that's a to me in Sun Street pointer by Maddie Wishman. Off the nice assist there by uh, Bailey. So the Maroon lead is now 38. Looks like a foul on Anderson. Just checked in the game for the Maroons. Yes, it is. Allie Anderson, the 5-4 freshman with the foul for Dowling. Pook back to the line. She's missed her first two, but she's hit her last four. She's been living at the line here lately in the second quarter. Make every possession count. First free throw good. She's hit five in a row. Pook, a 53% free throw shooter, the best on the team. And right now, she's looking for her sixth in a row and misses it. Rebound. Out of bounds, and it'll be East Basketball as battling in there. Lyric Sellers with Lexi Bowles, and they say it went off of uh, Bowles. So it'll be East Basketball underneath their own basket. Inbound it to Dyer. Remy with it on the right side. Top of the key it goes to Binta Suba. Hand off to Poot. A left elbow. She's double teamed. Now she gets it over to Sellers. Back up top to Dyer. Dyer in the lane. Dribbles. Gets to Sellers. Won't shoot it on the baseline. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 48 to 11. Dowling with the lead over East. And this girls' only contest tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Dribbling baseline is Pooker shot up no good. Rebound Dowling and Olivia Bailey with the rebound. Outlet pass goes to Wishman. She goes down court. Gets it to Rodriguez in the lane and draws a foul on the pass. And it'll be out of bounds to Dowling with a minute 43 remaining. 14 white foul. Looks that'll, like, be on, uh, that'll be on Pook. That's her second. Team fifth. Goodness sakes. Both teams are emptying the bench. They'll keep you busy there, uh, Steve-O. I'm out of uh, place on my score sheet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mine's not I'm quite as long as yours. <laughs> yeah, you got the small. <laughs> Is that why you're using your bifocals? Yes. <laughs> well, you've got to have those cheaters. Yeah. All right, Friedrich in the game for Dowling underneath the uh, Bowles. Her shot no good. The rebound shot up and good. Lexi Bowles with her fourth point. She got it back. By far the tallest player on the court. Julia Friedrich in there now. A long three coming by Sellers. No good. Rebound Dowling. And Lauren Fredericks in there. Fredericks, 5'7", freshman. Gets a rebound. All the way down court. Tried to get the Bowles. It's stolen away by East. Good hustle that time by the Scarlet's Lyric Sellers, the 5'7", sophomore. With the steal. Young lady leads the team in three-pointers made on the season. Sellers now gives up the basketball to Alexis Brown. Now they throw it in the back to Dyer, and it's over and back on East as Dyer tracks it down. With 57 seconds remaining, 50 to 11. Dowling by 39, their largest lead of the night here in the first half. In the second half, won't that mean a running clock if that score stays the same, that right? That is correct. It's got to be 35 points, yep. and then once the running clock starts, it can drop to 25. Yep. It's a uh, out-of-bounds play off the violation. So throwing it in for Dowling will be Allie Anderson, who checked in the game, and I have everybody in tonight for Dowling in that first half. How about That's good. that? Good to see. Maddie Wishman with it. it Move it over to the left side. Ferricks for three, and it's good. And that's her second three of the year. And it's a two me and Suns three pointer. Give him a call. 515 282 7976. Appetizers are on to Vinny. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> we should order and have Mario bring it oh, here. We're not that far away. Well, <laughs> I know they're busy. All right, East with it. A long three coming. Good. That's Lyric Sellers. Shoots and scores. That's her 23rd three of the year. Leads the team. That's her first three points tonight. It's 53-14, Dowling. 20 seconds remaining. The Maroons run their guard weave and now take it to the lane. A shot up and good by Lauren Fredericks. That's her fifth point. 
Lauren, a 5'7 freshman. Yeah, nice play right there. East with the ball. Dyer for three. It's off the back iron. No good. Offensive rebound, Brown. Bodies on the floor. Brown with it. And they're going to call her for traveling. With 1.4 seconds remaining here, Steve Devenny. I would guess the Maroons will take a knee at this point. <laughs> How do you do that in basketball without traveling? I want to know. There you go. All right. We've come to the end of the first half. We'll have the running clock in the second half as Dowling leading at halftime 55-14 over Des Moines East here on Iowa Catholic Radio as uh, we go to halftime here at the East High Gym. And alongside Steve Devenny, I'm Mark Amadale. David Beltram in on this Tuesday night. And a reminder, we'll be on the air Friday night, 6 o'clock, from the Ankeny Centennial Gymnasium as we have a, a top-10 matchup in the girls' game and the boys' game. So we hope you join us for... Uh, both games this Friday night, Dowling at Anki. That'll be the second time through. The Maroons won both games earlier this year. Uh, that was first Friday uh, out of the uh, Christmas and New Year's break. So up to Centennial, and uh, we look forward to that game. Well, we're at halftime here. We'll add up and total up the scoring here in the first half and come back with our halftime activities from the East High Gym. Mark Amadale, Steve Devinia, halftime score again. Dowling 55, East 6. East 14 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. And we're back here at the East High Gymnasium halftime. It's 55-14, to 14, Dowling with the lead here at halftime over Des Moines East in this non-division game of the CIML. Mark Amadale, Steve Devenny. Courtside as we are just next to the official scorers and right next to the Dowling bench and uh, enjoying our halftime performance by young... Well, I would say she's twirling at the time, but she's not. It's a wooden rifle and she's doing a very nice job is uh east high known for the stepperettes well this is part of the uh combination now stepperettes aren't here but uh the, part of the dance team is and you can hear the music in the background doing a good job mark that's what you want to hear well dowling in the first half runs with two of five from the free throw line east high was five out of eight at the line and the maroons enjoying a uh, tremendous lead here at halftime and steve i know you look at the road uh, coming up for Dowling as uh, the Maroons go to Centennial on Friday. But how about this Saturday game? Dowling at number one, City High of Iowa City. It's a girls-only contest. 230 in Iowa City. Number one versus number two. Wouldn't that be a great matchup to travel over and watch? Yeah, you know, you just don't get to see that very, very often during the regular season when those two top teams like that match up. So uh, Maroons, to their credit, have really gone on the road played some really very tough competition this year a couple different out-of-state trips early in the year and now they're going over to number one in the state uh city high and uh well, they've been to minnesota and played uh, two of the top uh, teams up in that area went over to chicago later didn't they played the top team yeah. out of chicago wow. and uh of course when you come back here and you play the walkies the johnstons uh the ames and then all the teams in the, in the top uh, 15 that are in your conference and if you remember last year, the CIML Central Conference, you, know, you, you got Ames, Centennial, Ankeny, along with Johnson, Urbandale, and Dowling. I think four of the six went to the state tournament. They all amazing. played each other twice during the season. Yeah, just amazing. And uh, that's pretty good competition, and certainly that way for the Dowling girls. And next week, week from tonight, we'll be at Dowling for a girls and boys doubleheader. That's number 12, Mesa, uh, coming down and taking uh, taking on the Maroons in a girls and boys doubleheader next Tuesday, February 4th. And then... 
The following Friday, Dowling hosting Urbandale uh, at the Dowling Gym in a girls and boys doubleheader. So that'll uh, wrap up the next two weeks with uh, East this East tonight, Centennial on Friday, City High of Iowa City on uh, Saturday, and then Mesa City and Urbandale next week, and then Dowling wrapping up their season. They have a week off, and they take on number 12 Ames at Ames. That'll close out the regular season for the girls. The boys will still have a few more games because the uh, girls will go to regional play. More than likely, Dowling will get a first round bye, and they will play on that first Saturday, that Saturday, February 22nd. They'll have a 7 o'clock game. More than likely, they'll be one of the top eight seeds, which means they will have a home game. But uh, regular season, winding down, Steve Devenny. It's hard yep. to believe you're the 21 games. And Did you say this is game uh, 16? This game 16, yep. and they play 21. So yep. that's the regular season for the Maroons right there. No, it's been a, a really, really good schedule. Maroons have played at a high level the whole season, and uh, – I would anticipate they'll finish strong and and make a put a put a good little run together in the postseason. Yep, and the postseason is uh, you know anybody's game as we all know. As uh, Dowling girls right out here, we haven't even got halfway through halftime and they're out here warming up. Not a whole lot to uh, say to the kids other than to uh, compete and, and get better. And let's take a look at our scoring. I just now got Dowling's done, and they had how many players? They put all 15 girls in. And I think they all scored except two, except, three. Except three. Except yep. three. That's what I have, too. Yep. All right. So let's go run down the scoring for Dowling, the visiting team here at East High. Leading scorer for the Maroons is seven, with 17 points is Caitlin Clark. She's hit one to me and Sun's three-pointer and has 17 here in the uh, first half. She is followed by Nye Tong with six points. Grace Gaber with a pair of to me and Sun's three-pointer with six points. And... Five points for Lauren Fredericks off the bench here in the last few minutes of the first half. She has five. And then four points for Lexi Bowles off the bench for Dowling. Three points for Meg Simplot. Three points for Ella McVeigh. Actually, five points for Ella McVeigh, excuse me. Three points for Maddie Wishman. Three points for, uh, we mentioned Simplot with three. Two points for Brianna Rodriguez. Two points for Anna Gippel. Two points for Olivia Bailey. That should round out scoring for Dowling. Again, the Maroons were 2 of 5 at the free throw line in the first half. And for the East High Scarlets, they were led at halftime by Rachel Pook with five points all at the free throw line. She was followed by Lyric Sellers with three points, and that was a her one basket was a three-pointer for her team leading 23rd three of the year. And then two points each for Alexis Brown, Brecklin Williams, and... Hannah Olson for the East High Scarlets. The Scarlets went 5 of 8 at the free throw line. So that's a look at our halftime statistics. And one more thing, let's run down the uh, girls 5A top 10s before we go to break. And the number one team in the state is City High of Iowa City, and they will meet Dowling on uh, Saturday afternoon at uh, 2.30 in the City High Gymnasium in Iowa City. They're followed by Johnson at number 2. Dowling Catholic is 3rd. Cedar Rapids Prairie 4th and Waukee 5th. 6 through 10 has Southeast Polk, Cedar Falls, Waterloo West, Urbandale. Ankeny Centennial is 10th in Class 5A girls. 11 through 15 is Davenport North, Ames, West Des Moines Valley making an appearance in the top 15, the defending champs out of Class 5A, along with uh, Bettendorf and Council Bluffs, Abraham Lincoln. So that's a look at the top 15 in Class 5A. We'll take a break, come back with the start of the second half. Along with Steve Devenny, I'm Mark Amadale. 55-14 to 14 is our score. Dowling leading east here at the East High Gym. I want to thank David Beltram, our studio producer. We'll be back with more here on Iowa Catholic Radio. The home and away voice of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, creating commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. Also serving your home needs by creating custom frameless shower doors, mirrors, glass tabletops, and specialty glass. Two Rivers Glass and Door, design, fabrication, and installation. 515-222-4860. Online at tworiversglass.com. Two Rivers Glass and Door, serving imaginations since 1992. Thank you, R&R Realty Group, for supporting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. 
r r Realty Group is an Iowa commercial real estate owner and developer that provides services for all commercial real estate needs, including brokerage, interior space planning, real estate management, construction, and more. r r Realty Group has been accommodating business expansions and real estate solutions since 1985, solving commercial real estate needs. r r Realty Group, establishing long-term relationships built on trust. And we're back here at the East High Gymnasium alongside Steve Devenny, Mark Amadale. Halftime score, Dowling 55, East 14. The Maroons with a 41-point lead at halftime, which means in high school uh, basketball, both girls and boys, the mercy rule. If you're ahead by 35 or more in the second half only, the running clock. So the clock will only stop for free throws, timeouts, or, God forbid, an injury. But that's the only time you can stop the clock. So that's where we're going to... Have at our disposal here, Mr. Steve Devenny, as uh, we're looking for Mr. Lowell Long to take care of the uh, basketballs. And he is late. Looks like a, a assistant coach for the Maroons, Joel Danner, is going to uh, get the balls off the uh, court. Uh, coach Danner. You'd think our official, Rodney Russell, would take care of the basketballs. He knows what they look like. Coach Danner had to bail him out again. <laughs> Coach Danner. Well, I just got a warning. That's uh, official yeah. had enough of me. So he might be uh, selling popcorn, Coach Danner. Well, the one official is a guy I work with. He's a county. co-worker. Yeah. He's a co-worker. My computer will not be working tomorrow. I guarantee it, Steve. It's the <laughs> IT people. You can't mess, oh, with, you know, you can't don't. mess with IT people. You do not want and to mess with And he heard it, and I got uh, the look. Yeah. Here's Clark for three to start the second half. Good as Maroons switch baskets, going to the south basket. And Caitlin with another to me and Suns three-pointer, 515-282-7976, to me and Suns.net. Oh, bread and ravioli, cheese sticks. Oh, hey, there you go. So, Caitlin, it's all with, that health food over there. Yeah, you got you got it's balanced, Steve. You yeah. got to have a little bit of balance. <laughs> Clark with twenty. It's the deliciousness. <laughs> Turnover by East. Maroons will get it back here. on their first offensive set. Fifty-eight, fourteen, Dowling. And we saw. All 15 gals play in the first half for Dowling, and all but three scored. So we'll see what the second half turns out. Dowling with the ball with their original starting five. It's McVeigh, Clark, Gipple, Tong. A long three up and no good by Clark. Gaber also in there, and a foul will be on Rachel Pook, and that'll be her third. And three free throws coming for Caitlin Clark. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Construction professionals, dental associates, and Kemen. Courtside here with Steve Devenny, Mark Amadeo. Tried to upgrade your seats a little bit. Yep, I appreciate it. Second free throw, no good. She'll get one more. Clark makes the first, misses the second. We used to, many years ago, way up there, they have an enclosed press box with glass. And yeah. uh, used to be up there quite a few years and. Uh, modern technology, you can get court size. Second free th- throws, go- or third free throws, good. So Clark goes. She now has 22 points. And Dowling's lead is now 60 to 14. And East with the basketball. Alexis Brown, who gets the start in the second half, hands it off to Holson. They get it to the right side to Brown. Now back out to Pook. Pook coming off a ball screen by Brown. Pull up jumper in the lane. It's no good rebound. Clark and Dowling. Dowling by 46 here in the second half. Here's Gaber posting up left block. Turnaround shot up. Rims out. No good. Ball on the ground. On the floor, rather. Gipple with the rebound. She goes to a double team. It's stolen away by Pook. East with it. They're going towards the north basket here at East. Pook all the way down court. Scoop shot. No good. Rebound Nye Tong, her cousin. Good quickness there by Pook. Just couldn't finish in traffic. Now bullet pass down court to <laughs> Clark, and she threw it away, trying to hit McVeigh with that baseball pass. And Yeah, good pass, but uh, at the last minute, the East High defender. Just deflected it, yep. but went right off of McVeigh. Yep. 60-14. to 46-point lead for the Maroons here at the East High Gym. East with the basketball. With it is Lyric Sellers. Top of the key goes to Olsen. Olsen a couple dribbles, nearly had it stolen away by Clark, and a whistle and a foul on Caitlin. 
as she made contact with Hannah Olson, who was driven the ball. Clark, her first foul, I believe. Yep, I agree. And out of bounds to East. Continuous clock. Five minutes remaining here in the third quarter. And we're not quite at 7 o'clock, Steve. No, it's a... It's going to be early home to dinner tonight for you, Mark. Make sure your wife knows that, and you bring her a to me and son's appetizer. Thank you. <laughs> Here's Pook in the corner, and she has a ball blocked out of bounds by Caitlin Clark as Bowles checks into the Dowling lineup for Nai Tong. So Moon's going with their starting f- four of their starting five. Yeah, Lexi just checked in for uh, Nai. So they did start the second half with uh, five starters. East with it. Here's Pook. Dribbling against Clark. Cut off on the right wing. Gets it up top to Olsen. Now swings it to the left wing to Alexis Brown, who gets the second half start for head coach Aaron O'Toole in his first year at East High. Here's Pook for three. In and out, no good. Rebounded by Brecklin Williams. She put back up and no good. Rebound Dowling and Gipple. And now whistling a backcourt foul. On East, and that'll be on Pook, and that'll be her fourth, I believe. Yep, I think that's right. So wholesale substitutions for the Maroons, as we will see Maddie Wishman. Also in there, Brianna Rodriguez. Also in there for Dowling, Julia Moore. Lexi Bowles will stay in. And Brianna Rodriguez, I believe, is... Yep. So we have a timeout called, and what we got here, Rodney Russell, this will be... Looks like a 30-second timeout. Yep, nobody's sitting down. So 60 to 14 is our score. 339 remaining here in the third quarter. Mark Amadale, Steve Devaney, courtside here at the Dowling Gym. Want to remind you, our next broadcast will be this Friday night. Dowling at Ankeny Centennial. We'll go on the air at six o'clock with our pregame show, girls game at six fifteen. The boys to follow. On Iowa Catholic Radio, Ankeny boys up to Ankeny Centennial boys, I believe, up to number four this week on the latest poll. So they have not lost since Dowling beat them back in early January. Steve, that'll yeah. be a tremendous matchup. I think they've got two losses on the season. I can't remember who beat them for their other loss, but the Maroons handled them yes, they fairly did. easily at the Dowling gym. Yep, and I just uh, looked today. And I know tonight. Uh, Ankeny Centennial on the road at Waukee, and Centennial girls are like. Eight and seven or seven and six. So Scott DeYoung hovering around 500 and going to Waukee tonight, taking on a Chris Guest team. So they might be at 500 by the time the Dowling girls play them Friday. We'll see. All right, Dowling with the ball in the lane. Pull up jumper. Good. Nice p- uh, move that time by Simplot. Went right through the contact, did the 5'7 senior for the Maroons. She sure did. She took the contact. Yes, she did. Simplot with two points or with her first basket of the second half. She's got five points tonight, 62-14 Dowling. East with the basketball, long three coming, missed them off the mark, no good by Sellers. Weak side rebound, Dowling. This is Simplot with it. Simplot, Meg has a ball taken away, stolen away by East. Scarlett's with it. Here's Sellers down the right side, tries to go through a double team and tries to split the difference between Bowles and Moore, and they're going to call the foul on Lexi Bowles for first. 2.45 remaining here in the third quarter. Clock will stop for the free throws as Sellers to the line for her first free throws of the night. And the first one is off the mark. No good. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Kemen, Dental Associates, Ashworth Vision Clinic, and Construction Professionals. Second free throw coming by Sellers is good. So Lyric with her fourth point. It's 62-15, Dowling. East High kids, but despite the score, Mark, have uh, continued to compete and play hard. You would expect nothing less. And now here's Moore down the lane. Her shot with the left hand, no good. Bowles the rebound, put back up, good. Lexi Bowles just out-muscled the two East defenders, including Sellers. And Lexi with her fourth po- or her sixth point, 64-15, Dowling. Maroons a 49-point lead, their largest of the night. Scarlett's with it. Brecklin Williams steps on the baseline, out of bounds, and may have twisted her ankle. She's going to try to shake it off with two minutes, ten seconds remaining. The game clock continues to run on the continuous clock here in the second half. 
Here comes uh, Aaron Kleppe back in the ball game for the Maroons. Kleppe, a 5'10 senior for Dowling. She's one of three that haven't, hasn't scored. Let's see need, if that, need, yeah, need to get her on the board. See if that can change. Here's Wishman with it. Top of the key. Get it in the lane <laughs> to Moore. Her shot no good. Ball slapped around, and Dowling comes away with it. Wishman comes away with it to Rodriguez. Left side. Now they get it top of the key. A three-pointer. It's no good by Wishman. Rebound east, and with the basketball is Pook. She stops the free throw line. Hands it off to Brown. Alexis driven the left side. Cut off. Gets it to Sellers. Her shot up and good just inside the three-point line. Lyric Sellers with her second field goal tonight and her sixth point. They're going to call that a long two. Yes, they are. Three-pointer on the way. Good for the Maroons. And that is Meg Simplot with the to me and Sons three-pointer. She's got two of those tonight. Eight points for Simplot and Meg Gives Dowling a 67-17 lead, a 50-point Dowling lead, their largest of the night. Now a shot in the lane. It's no good by Pook. Rebound Dowling. Simplot with it to Rodriguez. Her shot is up and no good. Missed everything just inside the three-point line on the left wing. Rebound east. Scarlet's in transition. Here's Sellers in the lane. Her shot no good. Drew the foul. Foul is on the Maroons, and they will call it on Aaron Kleppe, her second. Free throws coming here, Steve Devinney, for Lyric Sellers. Yeah, Coach uh, Meyer was not happy. And neither would you be if you were coaching no. one of those Dowling. Maroons did not get back on defense. Did not stop the dribble penetration. If you were, count, if you were coaching one of those youth teams, you'd be in their ear too a little bit. First free throw good by Sellers. She has seven points tonight. And Sellers will have another free throw. It's up and off the mark. No good. Rebound Dowling as Kleppe tracks it down. Gets to Wishman. She dribbles in the front court with the right hand on the right side. Top of the key, the pass to Kleppe. Dribble hand off to Rodriguez. Down the lane. Her shot up and good. Right over Pook. Brianna Rodriguez. And that is her fourth point. Clock's winding down here in the third mark. As you know, it didn't stop. Ten seconds remaining in the lane. A shot up and good for East. That's Sellers with the basket. Fouls on Dowling. That'll stop the clock with five seconds. And the whistle, or rather the fouls on Simplot. And Meg gets her first. And with 5.3 seconds remaining, Sellers with the basket. And the free throw is good. So she has ten points. 69-21 Dowling. That is the 14th foul on Dowling, two on East. Maroons with it. Here's Moore with it. Her shot is blocked. Blocked by Brecklin Williams at the horn. And we've come at the end of the third quarter with the score. Dowling 69 and Des Moines East 21. From the East High Gymnasium, Mark Amadil and Steve Devenny here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Back with the fourth quarter in one minute. The home and away voice of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. Thank you to Tumi and Sons for your support of Dowling Catholic High School basketball. Tumi and Sons is an Italian family restaurant with old country authentic Italian food. Enjoy the local atmosphere where you may even spot a priest, politician, or even Willie Farrell. Take advantage of Tumi and Sons bocce ball court with the kids while enjoying Tumi's homemade bread, pasta, and real Italian homemade desserts. Tumi and Sons is located on Southeast 1st Street, just south of downtown Des Moines and around the corner from Graziano Brothers. 515-282-7976. TumiandSons.net. Hi, this is Father Mitch Pacwa. And our Lord said if you give a cup of cold water to a disciple because he's a disciple, you get a disciple's reward. We thank you for your support of Catholic Radio because we are trying to be faithful disciples and we trust that as you are generous, our Lord will also reward you with a disciple's reward. You can give securely online at iowacatholicradio.com, the Iowa Catholic Radio app, or call 515-223-1150. And we're back here at the East High Gym underway in the fourth quarter. Dowling 69, 
East 21. East with the first possession of the fourth quarter. Now steal by Dowling. Clark with the steal. Stops the three-point line. Gets it underneath to Tong. She kicks it back out to Gaber on the right corner. Underneath to Tong. Nice shot up and good. The basketball count and a foul on Lyric Sellers. On Lyric, that'll be her first foul. And Tong with the basket there, Steve Davini And Nye with her eighth point. Good pass down into the post by uh, Grace Gaber on the assist. Be the third team foul for East here in the second half. And Who is that on, Mark? That will that was on Sellers, I'm sorry. number twenty-three, her first. Yep. So free throw, one free throw for an and one here for Nye, and it's up and good. What a week she's had! What two weeks she's had? She's increased her free throw percentage to just over forty-five percent after starting the year in low mid twenties. Yeah, she shot it well lately. She really has. She's Last, been working on it, I'm sure. Seventy-two twenty-one, Dowling with the. Uh, Three-point play, the traditional three-point play by Nai Tong, and now the ball goes out of bounds, and nice hustle that time. I don't know if that was Clark or Gipple that bounced, deflected it off the east high uh, dribble penetration. Now Gipple for three, and it's good for Dowling. That was Gaber right there. Oh, I'm sorry, Gaber. Corner three. To me, in sense, three points. She loves the corner. Well, set up because the, the corner's open as everybody's defending Clark in the middle. 75-21, 75-21, Dowling. Mark, I would guess the starters for the Maroons only have another minute or so to go here. And long three up and good for East. That's Lyric Sellers with her third of the night, and that's her 13th point. Gave her from the left corner again. She missed this one. Sellers, five points above her average. Yeah, Sellers has shot it well tonight, hasn't she? Yes, she has. She uh, had three points at halftime. She's got ten here in the second half. And Gaber's miss, rebounded by East. Now corner three is no good by the Scarlets, Brecklin Williams, rebound Dowling. Here's Clark in the lane. Shot with the right hand, no good. Tip, no good, and Clark gets it back. And the Maroons will, well, Clark for three, and it's no good. Rebound Pook and Ames, or in, excuse me, and East as we go the other way. Rachel Pook dribbles in the front court, guarded by McVeigh. Works the left side. And they're going to call a foul on McVeigh before the shot. And the Maroons will defend the out-of-bounds play as Ella picks up her first foul. Team fifth. Five and a half minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dowling 75, East 24. Runes by 51. Scarlets have it. They inbound the ball to Pook, top of the key. Now here's Sellers coming off the ball screen, works the right side, cut off the right elbow nicely. By Gipple. Now Pook, a little underhand scoop shot, no good. And guess what? She's fouled by her cousin. <laughs> Nye Tong will pick up the foul and Pook to the line. Maybe that's why Nye is uh, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> her first foul of the night, right? Yes, it is. Team sixth. So Pook, Rachel Pook, a 5'9 senior. Her and Nye are co- first cousins and both seniors. First free throw, no good. Pook tonight held to five points thus far as we got wholesale substitutions for Dowling. Starters are done for the night there for the Maroons. So. Bowles back in. Julia Moore back in. Also in there for Dowling. Meg Simplot. Maddie, um, Maddie Wishman. Maddie Wishman will run the point. And also Brianna Rodriguez. Second yep. free throw by Puka. is good. Rachel with six points tonight. She had five at halftime. That's her first point of the second half. And it's 75-25. Dowling by 50. Maroons in the front court. Simplot for three. It's off the mark. No good. And Lexi Bowles put back up and good as uh, Sellers didn't get her boxed out. And Bowles with her eight point. Bowles has scored in every quarter. Two points each. Yeah, 77-25 Dowling, 440 remaining. With the basketball is Sellers. Gets it to Pook left wing. Guarded by Moore. Freshman versus senior here. And Pook takes her on the baseline. Her shot no good. Rebound. Bowles. Lexi with it. In the front court. Gets to Moore. Julia. Dribbles in the lane, left-handed shot up off the off the glass, no good, but uh, put back up and good by Lexi Bowles. Height advantage for the Maroons, and Lexi is getting all kinds of rebounds. Ten both, points, b- both ends. Yeah, ten points for Lexi Bowles, 79-25. Dowling with the lead, East with the basketball. Here's Pook with it, guarded by Moore. Picks up her dribble, top of the key. Now gets to Lyric Sellers. Sellers in the lane. Gets it over to the wing, and that was where Hannah Olson was. They get it back inside, and a whistle and a foul at the right elbow. And 
Moore and Simplot hit the deck. And who are they going to call it on? They're going to call it on Simplot. Meg with her second foul for the Maroons. Free throws coming. As this will be a one and one for East High's Alexis Brown, who has two points in the contest. Clock stopped at 347 here in the fourth quarter. Free throw no good. Rebound Rodriguez. Final three and a half minutes of the contest. Dowling 79. East 25, and now they try to lob it inside to Wishman, and they overthrew her on the pass, so it'll be a turnover against Dowling, and East with the ball, Pook with it. Goes down the right side, cut off, double team. Now leaves it for Brown on the baseline, her shot deflected. And stolen away by Dowling. Julia Moore, boy, she's been working hard tonight. Moore takes it down the lane. Lisa for Simplot, 15-footer right wing, no good. Put back up, good. That's Julia Friedrich. That so was uh, Wishman, I think, wasn't it? Number that was Friedrich, number three. Okay. I'm sorry, you are right, Steve. You are. Maddie Wishman with yeah, the my basket. Ba- my bad. I thought Wishman five, is yeah. the one that hasn't scored. Oh, good. So Got her on the board. No, she's not. <laughs> it was on Friedrich. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Wishman, I'm sorry, Friedrich hasn't scored. Right. Wishman did. Now there's a shot no good by... Sellers, rebound Dowling and Bowles. Leaves it for Wishman, goes down court, and finally gets the pass off to Simplot. Simplot around the uh, right side, her shot no good. Bowles put back is no good. Rebound East and Alexis Brown. And we've got a timeout called by. Sub timeouts there by East. They're just trying to rotate some players off the bench, as are the Maroons. Yes, they are. Substitutions for uh, both teams. And Bimta Suba in, number five for East. Also in there, Alexis Brown, who stays in. Portia Jones in there, number 22 in, in the lane. Brown with the shot, no good. Number 22 for East High on the back of Aaron Kleppe. Portia Jones with the foul. That'll be the 14th foul on East. Yep, I think Dowling that's Dowling with right. seven. Final two minutes of the contest. Let's see also in there for East is Zariah White, number 35. Dowling with the ball. Friedrich underneath. They get it in the corner. A long three coming by Allie Anderson. It's no good. Corner to left corner on the baseline. Rebound East. Scarlett's running. With it is Alexis Brown. And they try to lob it inside to Portia Jones, and it's stolen away by Dowling. Maroons have it. Olivia Bailey in there now. Now they get it over in the corner for three by Frerichs. It's no good. Rebound Dowling underneath Kleppe. Her shot no good, and she'll go to the free throw line. Number 22 for the Scarlets. Picked up her second. That's Portia Jones, and free throws coming for Kleppe. Let's get Aaron on the board. She's another one that hasn't scored so yeah, Her far. and Friedrich haven't scored. First free throw, no good. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by our good friends at r r Realty Group, Catholic Tuition Organization, Two Rivers, Glass and Door, and Mercy One. Second free throw, good. So she does get on the board, does Miss Kleppe with her first point good of the to, night. Good to see. 82-25, Dowling, a minute 20 remaining in the game. Here in the fourth quarter from the East High Gym, Brown, Brown with it. Swings it over to Ashlyn Hudrick, who just checked in. Rotate the ball around to Suba, and it's tipped out of bounds. Good defense that time by Julia Friedrich of Dowling. I'm Brown with it. And we're in the final minute. And now it's stolen away by Bailey. Olivia with the steal. Dribbles in the front court. Stolen back by East. Brown with the steal. And she's got an uncontested layup coming, and it's good. Stealing basket by Olivia Brown of East. That's her fourth point. Dowling in transition. They work underneath. Kleppe with the basket. Uh, she went right around Portia Jones and Aaron Kleppe with her third point. Good assist there also by uh, Frerichs. Yes, it was. East the other way. Brown on the baseline. Puts up an off-balance shot. No good. Rebounded by Jones, and she draws the foul. And that'll be on Dowling's Aaron Kleppe, her third. And to the free throw line for East, Portia Jones. She'll have uh, a pair here. 20, 26 seconds to go, Mark. Yep, Jones on the season. 0 for 2 at the line. See if you can get one to fall. First one is no good. 84-27, our score. Dowling girls ranked second by the Des Moines Register today. 
ranked third by the girls' union. Their new poll comes out on Thursdays, usually. Second free throw by Jones, no good. And rebound tracked down by Kleppe. And she gets it out to Frerix. Now across the timeline with it is Allie Anderson to Frerix. Dribbles baseline, cut off. 15 seconds remaining in the game, 84-27 Dowling. And now the ball's poked away by Brown, but right back in the hands of Friedrich. And now off the foot of Frerichs, it'll be East High basketball, and that'll do it. 84-27 is the final as the running clock takes over here as Dowling holds East to 13 second-half points as Maroons outscore uh, East 29 to 13 in the second half after leading the halftime 55-14. Dowling girls win it. 84-27, the final here at East High School for Dowling. They have now won their eighth in a row, and they improve their record to 14-2. And, and for East High, they fall to 4-11. and And this was a non-division game in the uh, CIML, actually a crossover game. So congratulations on the win tonight to, for the Maroons as they picked up their eighth in a row with the win. Final score, 84-27, Dowling over East in girls play. We'll have our postgame show coming up as we return to the East High Gym after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio, along with Steve DeVinney. And our studio producer tonight is David Beltram. I'm Mark Amadale. Stay tuned for the postgame show coming up here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports 365 is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling Catholic graduate, and Dr. Todd Pedig. The Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610, online at ashworthvision.com. The Catholic Tuition Organization provides the best tax savings over any other charitable giving in the state. 65% of your contribution directly reduces your Iowa income tax liability. Plus, there are still federal deductibility options to further save on taxes. Find details online, ctoiowa.org. All this for the kids and their future. And we're back here at the East High Gym alongside Steve DeVinney, Mark Amadale. Final score tonight in our one and only game. It was a girls-only contest, and the Dowling girls won their eighth straight with a very decisive 84-27 non-division game in the CIML over Des Moines East. Maroons improved their record of 14-2, which means they have five games remaining in the regular season. For East, they fall to 4-11. and 11. And for the Scarlets, uh, they are back in action right here tomorrow night. They have a makeup game with Des Moines Hoover in a girls and boys contest beginning tomorrow night at uh, 6-15 for the girls game. And then on Friday, the East High Scarlets travel to Des Moines North, which is just down the street here at uh, on the east side of Des Moines. For Dowling, they travel to Ankeny Centennial on Friday night. We'll have that game on Iowa Catholic Radio, part of a girls and boys doubleheader, beginning at 6 o'clock. Girls will tip off at 6.15. And then on Saturday, Dowling girls travel to City High of Iowa City, the number one ranked team in Class 5A. It'll be a girls-only contest, Dowling at City High on Saturday, beginning at 2.30 in the City High gym. So, uh, Steve Devaney, pretty decisive win for the Maroons and uh, a game in which they got all but two players that scored uh, for for Dowling, dressed 15 and uh, 13 scored. So not a bad night when you got everybody involved, and you like seeing nights like that uh, when you're a coach. Everybody got to participate, and everybody got some reps in, and uh, it's kind of like a, a midweek tune-up before uh, Friday's conference game with Centennial. You know, Mark, those uh, those players that show up every day and practice just as hard as the other kids don't always get to play on on Tuesday or Friday, but. Uh, Tonight they all got to contribute, and as you said, all but two got on the, the board with some points, and, and that's that's needed for the uh, subs from time to time. Absolutely, because you never know which one that you have to, uh, you know, may have to come in, yep. and, and whether it be a postseason game uh, or a regular season game because somebody could go down. So that, that is a, a good point indeed. We're just wrapping up the scoring here, and I think I've got it all figured out here, Mr. Deveni. I got you, your back if you don't. I know you were over there. On the on the on the break, I I'm trying to get my my 
totals in line as well. Yeah, well, that's not easy to do when you have the running clock and all that. And I think the last one we got here are free throws, and East was 1 of 5 at the line, so they finished 9 of 18 tonight. So I think we're set. We'll start with our totals tonight for Dowling. Uh, leading scorer for the Maroons was Caitlin Clark. She had 22 points. She had 17 at halftime and finished with 22 as she played through the uh, third quarter. Uh, rounding out doubles figure scoring. Lexi Bowles off the bench with 10 points for Dowling. Grace Gaber with 9 points. Nai Tong with 9 points. 8 points for Meg Simplot off the bench for the Maroons. And then uh, 5 points each for Ella McVeigh, Maddie Wishman, and uh, Lauren Frericks all off the bench for the Maroons. 4 points for Brianna Rodriguez, and three points for Aaron Kleppe, and two points each for Emma Gipple and for Olivia Bailey. Dowling went 6 of 11 unofficially at the free throw line. And for Des Moines East, our leading scorer was uh, Lyric Sellers. She had three points at halftime, finished with 13, and she was the only gal in double figures for East with 13 points. Rachel Pook with six points, four points for Alexis Brown off the bench for the Scarlets, and then uh, Brocklin Williams. Another starter with two points, and Hannah Olson, another starter for East, with two points. Scarlets go at 9 of 18 from the free throw line. And our quarter scores tonight, Dowling jumped out to a 22 to 6 lead at the end of the first quarter and uh, outscored East 33 to 8 in the second quarter. Dowling led 55 14 at halftime. Maroons outscore East 14 to 7 in the, sec- in the third quarter with the continuous clock. Maroons led 69 21 going into the fourth quarter and outscore East 15 to 6 to win it 84 84- 27. Again, the Dowling girls improved to 14 and 2 overall. They remain 6 and 1 in Central Conference play. And for East, Scarlets fall to 4 and 11 overall, and they remain 3 and 3 in Metro Conference play. So, Mr. Devinny, that kind of wraps up our scoring, and we got one more break coming up. But uh, some thoughts out of you out of this uh, performance. Uh, pretty matter of fact, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of kids got a lot of playing time tonight. It wasn't uh, totally unexpected, Mark. But uh, as we talked about, uh, good night to get home and. And for the kids to get their homework done, or you know, sometimes on game nights you end up getting home at nine, nine thirty, ten, and tonight uh, everybody can get home, and hopefully the roads aren't too bad again. And if you're on your way home, order takeout five one five two eight two seven nine seven six. That is to me and sons on Des Moines South Side, just south of Principal Park. We're Steve Devenny. Uh, we'll try it out. And did you ever get to play a game down there actually when you were at Grandview? Didn't Coach Lou have? Yeah, a, we played over there a thought, couple times. I thought you did. Yep. Yeah, was the old Sec Taylor. Yeah, nah, that's what I thought. It was kind of a, it was kind of a, uh, the field wasn't in near as good of condition as it was as it is today. But you, uh, it was there was still a better true hop than what you were experiencing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a pleasure. You know, it was an honor to play there. Yeah. So yeah, you can order to me and sons at to me and sons dot net. You can order takeout, or you can give them a call or stop by fifteen oh one Southeast First Street. Want to thank Mario, Joe. Louie and Joe Jr. for what they do in supporting our three-point baskets all season long. We'll take our final break and come back and wrap things up. Again, the Dowling girls a winner tonight over Des Moines East, 84-27 here at the East High Gym. For Steve Devaney, Mark Amadale back with final thoughts after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, construction professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up, heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Construction professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work. It's beautiful. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. It's a family business built on a strong foundation to create a new or remodeled home that is uniquely yours. cpcustomhomes.com. From our family to yours, God bless. Thank you, construction professionals. Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years' experience, Dental Associates with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Karbaka, Dr. Christine Mulcahy, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. And welcome back to the East High Gymnasium. Mark Amadale, Steve Devinney. Final thoughts here in Iowa Catholic Radio. The Dowling Girls are winner tonight, 84-27. I want to thank everyone for tuning into our broadcast, including Mr. Steve Devinney. You're going to get home early tonight. Have you uh, ordered takeout from uh, To Me and Sons and bring it to your beautiful bride, Tracy, back in Johnston? Haven't done that yet, but well, uh, it's not the, out of the question. I understand. Well, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. And 
Steve, I want to thank you for uh, sitting alongside me and uh, bringing back some uh, great memories here at the East High Gym. Man, there are some tremendous games. Bob and Sharon Hansen, you look at her their picture, the 79 state champion girls basketball team, and then uh, Sam Powell winning a, a title here back in, in 2011 here at Des Moines East, and uh, Sam retired after last season, after 15 years here at East, and uh, first-year head coach uh, Aaron O'Toole, I want to thank him and his staff. Uh, uh, they'll get, they'll keep things going for where Sam uh, left off, but uh, tonight it was just too much Dowling and the, the Dowling girls. Yep, a little one-sided affair, but uh, East High will, will live to play another day, and they'll, those kids will continue to improve, and everybody's going to keep fighting. All right, Steve, well, we'll talk to you down the road, and I appreciate it. All your comments throughout the season, and uh, we'll talk to you next time, my yeah, friend. Thank you. Steve Devaney, my broadcast partner tonight, and that'll wrap things up from the East High Gym. I want to thank our studio producer, David Beltram, along with uh, the, our executive director of Iowa Catholic Radio, Tony Calumet. Our thanks also to the folks at Dowling, uh, Tom Wilson, the athletic director and head football coach, along with Mary Pick and Michael Connor, and, of course, Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School. Thanks to all of them, including Father Ryan Andrew, our pregame, who does our pregame uh, prayer the Dowling Chaplain. Our thanks to all those folks. And again, thanks to our business underwriters and supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio. Without them, we don't have broadcast here of Iowa Catholic Radio's coverage of Dowling Sports, including Kemen. I want to thank Dental Associates, Construction Professionals, along with Ashworth Vision Clinic, Mercy One, Two Rivers Glass and Door, Catholic Tuition Organization, and R&R Realtor Group. And our thanks also to the staff here at Des Moines East, including uh, Athletic Director Lyle Fetters, the uh, Central Region High School Activities Director of the Year in 2019. I want to thank Lyle, along with uh, Lowell Long and his staff, and uh, back to along with uh, Kim Smith back in the uh, East High Athletic Office. East Girls Coach Aaron O'Toole, we want to appreciate his help. Uh, throughout uh, tonight's broadcast. Our next broadcast will be this Friday night, January 31st, as Dowling will be at Ankeny Centennial. So join us for the contest. We'll be on the air at 6 o'clock. Uh, tip off of the girls' game at 6.15, the boys at 7.45. So join us for the pregame show at 6, Dowling at Ankeny Centennial, this Friday night, January 31st, here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Again, the final score once again, Dowling 84, East 27. For our studio producer, David Beltram, this is Mark Amadale. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a safe and blessed, faith-filled evening. Our coverage of Dowling Catholic High School basketball is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen, Mercy One, and Timmy and Sons. Please support the businesses that underwrite Iowa Catholic Radio on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM, streaming at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. The proceeding has been a Dallin Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio.